Alrighty guys, lights in the hay barn, so I can keep working after dark, so, and it is dark. Uh, we're gonna start working on putting this winch on my trailer here. This is so we can go recover my dozer. It's broke down, uh, down the road. Um, so, uh, Badlands winch, 12,000 pound uh, capacity. Uh, we're gonna mount it up here on the front of the trailer. So, uh, I'm gonna get started on that. First thing we gotta do is uh, cut some of the uh, current uh, structure out of the way and uh, we'll be replacing it uh, with these big heavy uh, channel irons here so see these are some fat boys good thick heavy channel and uh, that winch fits just perfect on there so hopefully I can get the bolts in there no problem so so nice to have these lights in here uh, we can just keep working and uh, keep going so I've been kind of getting some stuff ready and uh, we're about ready to start cutting up uh, some stuff. So let me show you the first thing we've got to cut out of the way real quick. Alrighty, so plan is uh, this big piece of a uh, channel iron, that's going to be what holds the actual winch. And it's going to go right in here in the uh, front of the trailer here, which means I need to cut this little uh, X bracing out of the way. And then once I get that done, uh, we'll put that in there for the winch. I've got another one sitting on the back of the truck over there. I've also been cutting my bail spike off the truck. Um, it, it's actually cut off the truck, ready to go. Um, and then these, uh, this is a I beam, high profile beam. So I can use that to put in some more, uh, replace the bracing that I'm going to cut out basically. Uh, if I decide I need to. So um, that other thing up there though, that other channel iron, that's going to be what holds the, uh, fair leads is going to get mounted up here on the front as well. And I'm hoping, um, those fair leads will fit actually inside the channel. So I'm hoping I have enough room in there, uh, that I can put that, the other uh, channel iron in here kind of this way with the fair leads tucked up inside them, but we'll see how much room I end up with. So, all right. Um, yeah. Time to start cutting this this bracing out of here. So, uh, set up a time lapse, I think, if I can, and and uh, yeah, we'll get going on it.
Alrighty. That's pretty much all the weld prep that I'm gonna do, I think, on this piece. And that piece is fitting where it belongs, more or less. No, uh, it's gotten, I knocked it a little bit. But, uh, uh, so I think the next thing to do will be to try and lay out the uh, bolt hole patterns on that and on this um, for the winch and the fair leads. And then of course I'll have to cut a uh, hole out of the middle of this. That's looking pretty good. It's pretty tight in there. Um, I wish I had just a little bit more room. So I think on that one, after I get the uh, holes drilled in it, I will uh, uh, cut a chamfer on the back side, and I can get it tucked up a little bit tighter. That ought to give me just enough clearance uh, that everything should work. So uh, that's the most of it, though. We're almost there. Try to drill some holes. I'm going to fire up the uh, drill press over here and, and uh, see if I can't use that to drill these holes. So that would be cool. job for the old drill press um i don't actually have a uh, drill big enough though so uh to finish that out so we'll have to come back later and uh I'll have to get a bigger drill bit out here but uh pretty cool though worked good 100 year old machine and all drilled some holes anyway this is one thing that i was uh concerned about on this just because of how thick this uh channel iron is you see that radius right there is kind of in my bolt holes uh, so I'll have to uh, grind that out a little bit and I'll leave that so that my bolt head can sit flat. If, if you tighten it down on that, you know, it's going to tilt the uh, bolt head and it's going to cause it to break the bolt in half is, is what's going to happen. So um, no big deal though. I'll just uh, relieve a little bit of that out of there and uh, uh, go ahead and do that. We'll come back with the uh, bigger drill bit once I get one. And uh, yeah, we should be just fine. So grind that out real quick all right picked up um this uh diablo hole saw set and uh these are pretty cool it's just it snaps right in there that's pretty slick and boom ready to go so pretty cool um i'm pretty impressed with a lot of diablo's other products their saw blades and stuff so we'll see how these hold up they're just by metal um in my experience cutting heavy steel like this uh, the, this type of hole saw doesn't always hold up very well, but um, it's what was available to me at the hardware store. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, a little bit pricey. So this set has um, five saws in it and adapters and the little pilot drill thing. So uh, nice, nice little case. So um, and then I also just picked up a uh, half inch twist drill for these holes and to open up the other ones so all right let's uh see how this does like i said it looks good i, I really like that uh, what do they call that snap lock plus little adapter thing that's pretty handy oh let's see how they actually cut through kind of just drawing this out template and then we'll just eyeball it from here
My drill's not loving it. My battery's dying. Two holes but I mean that's oh a little bit over a quarter inch probably five sixteenths inch thick right there and uh yeah appears to be no worse for wear didn't lose any teeth so yeah not bad pretty impressed all right see how this goes
right, moment of truth. Let's go see if the uh, if it fits. <laughs> Golly, went to get the welding trailer. Barely made it back in here. Then I couldn't get it backed up to hay barns as close as I got. I had to unhook it and drag it over there with the strap on it with the tractor there. So I could pull the truck out because the truck was stuck. What a mess. Anyway, I was just going after the torch. So uh, I guess I'll just carry the bottles up to the hay barn. Uh, my holes ended up being a little bit off. So uh, the easiest way to fix that is just going to be with the torch, I think. We'll just open them all up a little bit so that it'll fit. Show you the what it looks like here. You can see there that one, and this one's the worst. Just missed it. These two lined up good. I can get those bolts in, and I did have to relieve just a little bit more of that in order to get in there. That will create kind of a weak spot on this beam, but it's so heavy, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So, I mean, it's just uh, ten millimeter bolts, four of them holding it on there. So. Uh, <laughs> that channel iron is going to be way stronger than those four bolts. So uh, we have the torch over here and set up and we'll, uh, we'll uh, cut that, cut those holes a little bit bigger. All righty, there she is, all welded in. Pretty cool. Uh, I meant to buy a battery today and I forgot. So we'll be back tomorrow to actually finish this out. But uh, the battery I'm going to put up here. So this is kind of jacked up. Um, but I gotta, I'll reinforce that. I've got a little piece of metal put in here. Battery, uh, box to put it in, and then I'm gonna get another uh, uh, little solar powered uh, battery tender um, to attach to it. That way it should just be up and ready to go anytime I need it. And then that way, um, well, I, I thought about running the battery, running the leads off the truck. Um, you know, on the flatbed, for instance, I can come up through uh, where the hitch is out there and just have welding style quick connects on it. But then I'm limited to only this truck. So if I just go ahead and put battery on the trailer, then it doesn't matter what truck I put the trailer on, the winch will work. And one of these days, once I move out of my camper trailer, I'm actually gonna take this jack off and I'm gonna cut the double jacks with electric operator off of my camper trailer and put them on this trailer. And then I'll have battery on board to run electric jack. So um, that'll be cool. Um, let's see here. So I've, really, that's that's pretty much it as far as the fabrication goes. Um, I didn't show any of the welding. It's it was a really tight spot. Camera would have just been in my way, and you wouldn't been able to see anything. And I think I got enough time lapse for this video anyhow. So, but yeah, that's that's her. She's ready to go. Oh, I still got to tighten it down. Uh, can't forget to do that, but. Yeah, that turned out pretty good, I think. Check it out. So, cool. Uh, that much closer to getting the do dozer recovered. So, all right, see you guys tomorrow. We'll get the uh, battery hooked up, and we'll, um, we'll run it a little bit, try it out. Almost forgot, but I did all this welding with that little Forney Cracker Box welder, and that's actually the first welder I ever bought. Uh, my dad probably remembers. Maybe he'll leave a comment down below. I think I was... 13 or 14 years old. I don't think I was driving yet. Uh, whenever we found that, we bought it from an old dude. I think he found it on Craigslist or something like that uh, for a hundred dollar bill. Bought that little guy. Still runs, still works great. Uh, it's got solid copper core in it. Or, well, it's not solid. But, you know, it's it's wound. But old school little welder. Uh, works great. And so I wired up a uh, 220 circuit here in the barn. I had a 50 amp breaker on the uh, in the panel already. So I just wired into that, put that... Uh, outlet there i had the outlet on hand as well and uh yeah uh use that instead of having to get the old gas machine fired up i've been having trouble with it anyway so uh pretty cool old welder though <laughs> had it for a long time built a lot of stuff with it well, all righty batteries on and it works uh, pretty cool um the battery box here um, I need to get a better strap for it. Yep, because that bungee cord sucks. <laughs> but I've got enough room here in the box that I can store the uh, little remote pendant thing. Just stick it down there in the box. And it'll be right here with the trailer whenever I need it. So, pretty cool. i got my truck set up here. I think I'm going to winch the truck up onto the uh, trailer here just for fun. So, uh, let me get this camera set up and we'll try it out.
truck, so the uh, truck weighs about 10,000 pounds, so we should have any trouble with it. That's about as far as I can go, just because I still got a bunch of crap on the trailer, but it's got the truck all the way up on the ramps, so. Oh, cool. So like I said, truck weighs about 10,000 pounds. Uh, that dozer weighs about 12. It's a little bit heavier and it's tracks, so that'll be a little bit different. Um, but we're gonna have uh, the winch pull knot from the front and then we'll have the uh, tractor, one of our tractors pushing on it from the back to help it. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get it pulled up on there. It's gonna be a couple weeks though, probably. We gotta wait for it to dry out. It's too wet, so. And then the plan, once we get the dozer back in here, is to just lean on it a little bit with the uh, tractor, and then we'll just winch it out like so. Nice and slow and controlled, and hopefully just let it ride off just like that, so. Alrighty, cool. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, see you in the next episode.